A recent study found that arguing with ChatGPT actually decreased conspiracy theory beliefs. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. This story is super fascinating to me from a couple of totally different angles. I think it's one that will surprise a lot of people on the face of it. And basically the gist of it is that a recent controlled trial found that after a three-round debate with GPT-4, Believers in conspiracy theories, even very true believers, had significantly lower beliefs and lower conviction in those theories after the debate. In other words, ChatGPT decreased conspiratorial beliefs. The study was conducted by researchers from MIT and Cornell, including David Rand, Tom Costello, and Gordon Pennycook. David Rand tweets, Conspiracy beliefs famously resist correction, right? Wrong. We showed brief convos with GPT-4 reduced conspiracy beliefs by 20 percentage points. Tailored AI evidence rebuts specific arguments offered by believers. Effect lasts two plus months and works on entrenched beliefs. David continues, Attempts to debunk conspiracies are often futile, leading many to conclude that conspiracy beliefs are driven by needs and motivations and thus resistant to evidence. But maybe past attempts just didn't deliver sufficiently specific and compelling evidence and arguments. Constructing compelling rebuttals to all variations of all prevalent conspiracies is not humanly possible, but maybe easy for LLMs? To find out, we had GPT-4 deliver personalized counter-evidence to 2,190 conspiracy believers via real-time conversations. Participants first described a conspiracy they believed and evidence supporting their belief and rated that belief on a 0 to 100 scale. They then had three round back and forth text conversations with the AI, which was prompted to refute the conspiracy. Then participants re-rated their belief. So here's an example. An open-ended conspiracy assessment was something like this. The 9-11 attacks. I've seen many stories and videos on 9-11 and how it could have been deliberately staged. The government was behind the attacks. An example is World Trade Center 7. That building collapsed even though it wasn't bombed. I've watched many shows on the topic of 9-11 and they provide physical evidence as to what happened and filmed then-President George W. Bush in a classroom with small children. He got news of the attacks while he was attending the school. However, he kept listening to the kids and didn't seem the least bit alarmed about the attacks. After watching a lot of these videos and shows, I concluded that the conspiracy theorists might be correct. That general open-ended conspiracy assessment was then summarized by the AI into the 9-11 attacks were orchestrated by the government with events like the collapse of World Trade Center 7 and then-President George W. Bush's unalarmed reaction in the classroom serving as key evidence. The AI then asks on a scale of 0 to 100%, please indicate your level of confidence that this statement is true. The conversation partner in this case rated 100%. They then engaged in three rounds of conversation with GPT-4. I won't read all of them, but I'll give you a sense of the flavor. GPT-4's first response, thank you for sharing your thoughts and concerns about the 9-11 attacks. It's completely understandable given the complexity and magnitude of the events that day, why questions and doubts such as those you mentioned arise. It's true that World Trade Center 7 collapsed despite not being hit by a plane, unlike the Twin Towers. This fact alone can seem puzzling at first glance. However, extensive investigations by the National Institute of Standards and Technology explain that WTC-7 was severely damaged by debris when the North Tower collapsed. The debris caused fires that burned uncontrollably throughout the day because the building's firefighting system was disabled. And it goes on. This is the type of tone. It's very validating of why someone might have these concerns. It's not at all dismissive of them. But then goes on to state all the particular evidence that might contradict some specific set of beliefs. The human respondent says that may be true, but the evidence clearly shows that the Twin Towers collapsed due to demolition experts' account of explosives being deliberately placed to cause a collapse. And I believe the heat of that jet fuel was created by the crash into the towers was not enough to melt the steel girders supporting the building. The AI then responds to that question. And then after a third question, why then did we allow Iraqi men to enter our country and give them lessons on how to fly a plane? They also got past security fairly easily without question. The AI answered those specific questions as well. After all of this, the person instead rated their conspiracy confidence at 40%, down from 100%. Now, what's interesting is that while it might seem like this would be more successful for some conspiracies versus others, it actually was fairly consistent across different theories. For example, they saw a significant effect even for extremely currently hot-button topics like 2020 election fraud and COVID-19. Impressively, they also saw the effect persist over time, and it wasn't seriously diminished even two months on. David continues, Remarkably, the treatment even worked for, quote, true believers, those who strongly believed the conspiracy, felt it was very important for their identity, and or had a conspiratorial mindset. Their analysis found a meaningful effect across all different subgroups. David continues on another unexpected aspect of this. He says, 
the AI focused on the specific theory articulated by the participant, yet the effect spilled over to reduce beliefs in unrelated conspiracies. It also affected behavioral intentions, e.g. willingness to challenge others who espouse conspiracy and unfollow them on social media. Of course, one of the most important questions, how did it actually work? David writes, what was the AI actually doing in those conversations? The important things that he notes is that it was not relying on psychological approaches like addressing needs or identity, and instead was just focused on alternative explanations and counter evidence. They mapped out four different categories of counter argument that the AI might have used. Psychological, in other words, appealing to psychological needs, personal or societal harms, or encouraging empathy. Rhetorical, i.e. stories and examples or Socratic questioning. Rapport building, i.e. respect and understanding and common ground. And reason and rationality, i.e. alternative explanations, critical thinking, conflicting evidence, inconsistencies and fallacies. Rhetorical and psychological were the two least used options. There was a bit of rapport building, but not nearly as much as the reason and rationality category. The things that were used most extensively were alternative explanations, critical thinking, and conflicting evidence. Rand concludes, Evidence plus arguments can change beliefs about conspiracy theories, and many people appreciate it. Needs and motives do not totally blind you once you've gone down the rabbit hole. It just requires detailed, tailored evidence to help pull you back. Intervention is possible. And so this is where I landed first. Super interesting, feels very potent and powerful, and a potential real upshot of these technologies. However, as with everything with AI, power is a double-edged sword. As Ethan Mollick put it, the flip side of this finding is AI is already capable of superhuman persuasion. Ethan pointed to a different randomized controlled pre-registered study that showed that GPT-4 was better able to change people's minds during a debate than other humans. David Rand had the same concern, writing, Of course, without guardrails, LLMs might also be able to convince people to believe conspiracies or other falsehoods. Our finding emphasizes both the potential positive impacts of Gen AI and the importance of minimizing opportunities for this technology to be used irresponsibly. So I think the takeaways are that one, evidence actually convinces people of things, which is frankly a pretty encouraging finding, but also that the power of persuasion is very clear already, even with GPT-4 class systems. And that's something that we're going to need to keep a close eye on the deeper into society these LLMs get. For now, really interesting stuff. Appreciate this work. Until next time, peace.